Hello, this is Debbie and this is Light Up Your Worth. I am so excited. Today is our year episode. It's hard to believe that it's been a year since I did my first messy uh, podcast and my very first recording that I did with my dear friend, Christine Mira, as it was so messy. And so we decided to come together and, but the content was absolutely amazing. So if you haven't listened to that, that's on episode six. And by the time we uh, finished it and I tried my hand at editing and, you know, it ended up not working out that way, but that's okay. But since then, a year later, here we both are, and we wanted to come back on together and do um, like, this talk about life and messiness and trying new things. And so welcome, Christine. So happy that you're here. Thanks, Debbie, for having me. I'm just sort of, you know, in awe myself that it's been a year and just how much has changed uh, just around my business and your business and just all the people that we've connected with. It's, It's been really amazing. Hasn't it been? So I wanted to refresh the audience who are listening. So you know a little bit more about Christine is that she's an intuitive alignment coach and she's an Arvedic educator. She's the author of two books. One's called On the Wings of Faith. And the second one is Awakening Stories of Growth, Healing and Magical Collaboration. And she's in the process right now of writing her a third book of connecting the dots, understanding our spiritual picture. She's also a mom of two sons and being a, a son mom. I love that. And she's a huge pickleball player enthusiast, which is so freaking cool. Um, she comes to us with 30 years of experience. She works with healers, intuitive, gifted, and newly awoke people. Her psychic abilities are Vedic energy blueprint and soul purpose work help her clients attain a deeper connection to their gifts and abilities. And she creates a safe space for them to gain a profound connection and knowingness. She helps clients build congruency and alignment in their lives and work. So her background is a really a corporate business and personal coaching, which gives her this really unique blend to see the big life picture, including both personal and business purposes. So many clients speak to her rate, read, rate a little, what's that word? Oh my gosh. Relatability. There it is. Yeah. And deep understanding. So um, I think that's why we hit it off so much is our backgrounds are so similar with the corporate background, the coaching background, and then we were these intuitive folks just kind of, but, you know, I think what, what is really key between us is that very heart connected. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we sort of like venture out into the world with our hearts sort of wide open. And when we meet other others that vibrate at that same frequency, it's like, Oh, I'm home. Who are you? You know, like it's, I don't know. I think like when we first met, it was just sort of this, hi, who are you? This is who I am. This is who you are. Awesome. You know, there wasn't all that pretense of let me sort of, you know, see who you are. Let's be afraid. You know, we were just like, whoop. I know. Right. It was just so funny. It was, uh, it's like when you meet your peeps, like you really just know at this deep heart level that you're like, Oh, she's in my world. I don't have to do the pretenses, right? Like superficial bullshit. Like just don't do that. Like we meet them. And so, yeah. And what a year, right? Like what a year it's been. Yeah. It's been a big year. I mean, you know, we did that coursework together and then, you know, I worked with over a hundred people in like 90 days, a hundred plus people. And I just really attuned my, um, my teachings, who I am, how I, you know, how I show up in the world, the way I, the way that I communicate with people. And, um, and I, you know, really claimed that I, instead of being a marketer, which is what my background is in you know, I really claimed that I was an intuitive. And, you know, once I did that, like that was the piece that was not congruent. It was, there was something always slightly, uh, you know, uh, askew. And then when I started speaking, I'm an intuitive, I'm an intuitive. I, you know, I teach you about your intuition. I 
help you connect to your inner self. It's like, oh, it's like, you know, all the puzzle pieces fell into place and then I became this whole person. So. Yeah, you know, and you know what? I almost forgot to mention this last year too. You started your own podcast in Intuition First. Right, yep, I did. Yeah, I do it with Heather McKay, who is one of our buddies. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I love doing it with Heather because I tend to get a little esoteric in my explanations in the metaphysical realm. And Heather can always just bring it back, you know, to, oh, you meant this. And she simplifies them in such a way that somebody who's new on the path can get what I'm saying. And then people who have been on the path for a while get what I'm saying, you know, because I tend mm-hmm. to explain it um, uh, more complicated than I should. Um, and she, just, you know, she just has that loving, nurturing personality. So it's, it's, we're just a, we're really great as a team. I, I just, mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I just adore. So well, this is a shout that. out to Heather too, because I hey, love Heather, Heather too. Heather. <laughs> and if you're watching girlfriend. <laughs> And we all met in, you know, in some coursework and we were all in the same cohort and we just, just instantly just had, you know, along with Heather, right? Like this, like we could speak a language, this language of like kindness and love and that intuition that we could feel. And, and yet, you know, as well as when I launched this podcast, so there's my burka being delivered today, by the way. I don't know if you can hear the dog barking, but it was delivery day. I think it's her. <laughs> Can't wait. Can have but good water. And so when we we came together and coming out of the, I feel like this spiritual closet was the launch of this podcast for me. I'd never really publicly gone out and said I was an intuitive myself. You came out, you know, of really claiming that. And our lives are like our internal lives, our external lives just feel, and they just feel different. You know, they being able to step into their own disability. I mean, they are different. You know, they're different from a a standpoint of us speaking our truth and, you know, being on the planet and that we're calling out to say, yeah, I'm of service to whoever needs my help. I'm available and ready and open to, you know, facilitate for you what it is that you're you're trying to establish for yourself because as healers and as gifted people it's really hard to have those conversations with others that aren't on the same vibration don't don't have the same background like my whole work is about finding a space for all of us who who have gone down this path and we don't feel worthy we, you know, we were like, how could God pick me or source pick me to do this work? I'm not worthy of doing it. So there's the whole value issue. And then there's questions like, did I really hear that? Did that really happen? Did this really come to me? Like if you said that to somebody who doesn't have a background, if they really would think you're crazy. But when you say it to somebody who knows and they're like, yeah, that's awesome that you heard that. That's awesome. You had that experience. Yay for you. It's like, there's a level of validation around, I am that healer. I am that gifted person. I do have clairvoyance, you know? I I am using my intuition to be my GPS and guide me around. And once you as a healer, an individual um, claim that, then the universe gets to support you. Because all the time you're not claiming your truth, you're not standing in your brilliance and your radiance, source can't find you. Because it's like you have a, a, a filter or a cloud over you. But when you claim it and own it and your GPS is just happening, it's like, Whoa! signal, signal. And then everything starts happening for you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, yes. And that's, claim that's, that. why, yes. that's mm-hmm. why we're here on the planet right now. Yes. The, women that, the women that we are is because we need to do this. There's so much evil right now. There's so much destruction. There's so, so much animosity and hatred and, you know, it's all those ugly things that have been showing up and we stand for the goodness and love and support and collaboration and, um, you know, awareness and awakening and wisdom that that's what we're about. And we all have to come together in order to, you know, make this stand. It's like, you know, light and evil. 
right? It's like, it's like Star yes. Wars, yes. you know? <laughs> it is Star Wars or, you know, it's really the matrix. It feels like for me, yeah, you know, yeah. of, you know, are you going to take the blue pill or are you going to take the red pill, right? Like seeing yeah. the matrix for what it is and, and how this intertwines, like, you know, really some of the, um, the epiphanies I've had this year was that in me claiming my own light, you know, I constantly think of the Marianne Williamson uh, poem about when you stand in your light, it allows others to stand in their own light, right. By not hiding ourselves. And I, I just feel like I've been so blessed. I've, I've talked to over 60 women um, and one man and, and they all do a different you know, however they show up in this world, you know, this way of shining light and kindness and have gone through struggles. And I, what really has come through is the whole essence of the podcast, the light up your worth, you know, that worth factor of, wow, like really getting. And as people listen, you'll see that there's, they're all different. Everybody's different. Christine's story you know, if you haven't listened to an episode six, you've got to go back and hear what she's overcome. She's a freaking badass, guys. Like, and to have this kind soul and this no judgment zone, you know, all of the stuff, um, you know, in this last year, I've had some dark moments and in working through and really up leveling my own energy frequency, you know, of when I said yes, really big way you know, life's going to come at you because that's part of, you know, are you really committed to being conscious? Yeah. And I mean, you held so that light. You held that space. Like, how are you checking in? Yeah. Well, I love you. So of course I went, you know, I'm going to check in. I mean, there were times where it was like, yeah, she just needs to know that someone's out here. She might not want to talk to me, but you know, as long as she knows that I'm out here and I'm supporting her and I'm sending her love, like that's good. And then when you wanted to talk, you're like, okay, I want to talk, you know? So. Yeah. <laughs> and now it feels like I've kind of like shifted, you know, like a couple of months ago, it really started to shift and just yeah, me too. Mm -hmm, started to see like really how life was more unfolding for me. And so you know, what has been some of your epiphanies or one of your epiphanies that you've had since, you know, um, our, our kind of messy podcast so and, and we well, laugh right about it but <laughs> well I was just really overwhelmed by the number of people who love the Ayurvedic readings and um and you know for me what happens in that I also get intuitive downloads so while I'm giving you a physical Ayurvedic blueprint reading there's other stuff that's coming through and the other stuff that came through that I shared with my clients it was it was so profound. I mean, there's stuff that, you know, came through that I didn't know. And then they told me like, how could you know that? And oh my gosh. And, and then somebody like a year later said to me, you know, when you said this and as an intuitive, you may or may not remember because you're being a conduit and facilitating for someone else. So I may or may not remember. I, I might, but a lot of times once it's, once it's given, I'm, you know, my brain is blank because I'm not really doing it, you know, sources yes. using me. But she had said, yeah, when you said this about this and this, and oh my gosh, it just impacted me so much. And it changed my relationship with how I related to my mom. And then, you know, I had someone else who said, oh, that, you know, that insight you had about my son, um, I just don't know how you could have had that, but it, it was really profound. And I got to share with him, you know, how he was showing up in the reading and you know it's it's like that's when you sort of go wow it's really powerful because because you know when you're when you're working on someone's behalf I, for me i'm giving my whole soul and heart to whatever the greatest healing can be for that person and it's just amazing stuff that comes through that is being told to me it's like tell them tell them and i'm like on, you know, I can't like just dump all that information out like that. Um, so that that's been, I always knew I was connected that way. Um, but I had only really read for friends and family. 
So, you know, you have a little edge when you know the people, but when you don't know the person and you, they're literally just sitting in front of you for the very first time. And then you, you know, you're just like seeing all this stuff and you don't really, and I, I don't filter it because I don't know what's good, what's bad, whatever. I'm just being that clear conduit. Um, and then having them come back and just say, oh my God, you were, that was amazing. You are amazing. It was like, wow, really? you know, so yeah. that, that's been me. Like, that's like, wow, I really, yeah, okay. And so God's been really impatient with me. It's like, okay, Christine, I've been waiting for you. <laughs> And, uh, and I'm like, I know, I know, cause I'm a little shy and, uh, and then I get, okay, well, Hey, if you're not going to put yourself out there, I'm just going to bring that everything that you need to you. And literally in the past couple of weeks, you know, I, I got, um, confirmed to, to be a speaker in Austin, to be on stage to talk about your soul. Um, it's four days. I'm going to be there. And, um, that's why I'm writing my book. Cause she wants me to have a, a book that's solely mine. And then, um, and you know, it's airfare and speaking time and they're paying for all that. So it's just like, wow, like literally wow, like drop off my chair. Um, and then I was talking to my Ayurvedic um, doctor, mentor, friend, and she's like, what is it that you really wanna do? What, what is it, Christine? And I, start, I outlined, I said, I really want people to understand that they're, my, uh, mind, body, spirit, that, you know, it has to be all integrated because when it's, when it's, you know, um, separated, we never get the true holistic gifts of everything that we are, right? We're always like seeking something out for balance or to calm our fear or whatever that might be. And, and so she's like, because she, she is just a plethora of information. She's been practicing Ayurveda for 40 years. Wow. So, um, she said, I told her what I wanted. She's like, okay, all right, but I have slides. I have blah, blah, blah. I'll just give you this thing so that you can put a program together and teach it. And so this morning I texted her. I'm like, okay, I start research this, this, and this, and I couldn't find it. Is it our book? Is it? She's like, I need you to meditate. I need you to meditate and understand the relational aspects of mind, body, spirit, and then write it. And I said, well, I did that yesterday. <laughs> So it, it's just, you know, it's like gifts like that. We're here, this woman of 40 years of having a clinic, practicing, knowledge, like just willingly to share herself that way. It's just, I was just shaking my head. And then, and then there's one other thing. So my pickleball game got a little bit um, sideways because I was injured last year. So I didn't get to play for seven months. I had a, a separated the tendon in my foot. And so I'm back now. I've been playing for about five months and I was just saying, you know, to source like, gosh, I wish, really wish I could like take my pickleball game to the next level. Cause I just feel flat and, you know, like I'm not really learning or growing. And then this friend of mine, I was complaining and I said, yeah, I think I'm too little to hit the ball that hard. And he looked at me, he's like, no, you're not. My sister's about your size. And I taught her how to hit a tennis ball really hard. I can teach you how to hit a pickleball. And literally after four days of, of, you know, four days in the month, one, one week, one weekend, one week during, one day during every week, um, my game has changed. It's like, wow, that's me. So oh, that's, what yeah. that, that's what happens for you though, you know, when you're aligned, like just stuff like that just comes up. Like you, you think about it, you, you know, it comes through thought. And then you speak it out into the physical world and then the seed gets planted. But when the seed gets planted, I don't hold on to it and lament. Oh, I don't have anybody to teach me that. Or, oh, where am I going to get that? I just say, I need this. Right. And you never know how it's going to show up. Right. <laughs> but asking for what you want. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that sometimes people have a hard time understanding, you know, that life can come to us. We just have to ask for what we're what we're looking for and they well, get all I mean, they get I, all muddled i i know your well, work think, helps with that i think people get muddled because you know somewhere in their young life someone told them not to wish for too much or ask for too much or they weren't deserving or you know who do you think you are you know all that punitive judgmental bs that yeah. are put on kids right and so as adults we tend to 
hold ourselves back because we don't want to be disappointed or we, we don't want to put too much um or be too attached to things where you know it could crush us like that's the main thing that people are always trying to avoid is to feel pain is to feel the contraction of the desire which is why you may or may not dream about a life that you want to create right but the thing is is that your soul is so resilient and that those tests when those times come and we have that level of pain in our lives, those moments when we're in contraction and we're, you know, sort of holding ourselves and huddled, that's when the true gift comes. Because if we're willing to like germinate like a seed, we're willing to look inward and understand what that pain is about. We're willing to sit and experience the pain. The light comes. It's, it's, a, it's a test of your soul, really. And many people avoid it, you know, they avoid it uh, in many different ways, whether it's physical activity, shopping, drinking, sex, you know. Yeah, lots drugs. of distractions out there, right? Right. Being over busy, you know. Yeah, yeah, like your yeah. calendar is way too full. Yeah. But when people don't want to feel because they're afraid of what the pain may do, because for many people, they feel like the pain's going to destroy them, that they're, they're not going to live through it, that they can't get through it. Somewhere somebody told them you're not strong enough. And that's just a line of BS because right. your yes. soul is so highly adaptable. And your soul has asked really for that full range of emotion because you just can't be happy, happy, happy. And <laughs> you, you can't be just sad, 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 or you know, angry or frustrated. Like you're giving those emotions so that you can bounce back and forth between them. So that you understand the range and what it really means to be human, what it means to have a spiritual base, knowing like, okay, this has shown up. I, I can get through this. I have faith. I know I'm going to get taken care of, but, you know, source is going to support me. And then people in my life, there are going to be people in my life that show up that are going to support me. Yeah. And I think sometimes being able to feel that pain in, especially in the transition, right? If there's a lot of uncertainty in your life or some type of loss or you're grieving, it's hard. It's, it can be challenging to really see on the other side of that, especially if it's your first time through something really big yeah. and, and some things are much bigger than others, you know, and, and some of them really rock your world. Like they completely shift everything. They change everything. There's nothing that's the same, except there are some things that remain the same. Well, I mean, like I, when you say that it brings me to my husband's death, mm -hmm. right? Like he dies. I'm 42. He dies. I left with a 10 and an eight year old and everything in my world completely changed, got turned upside down, disheveled us. You know, I mean, he was the rock of our family. And yet inside of me, even though I was experiencing excruciating grief and pain from his departure, I also knew, you know, like I could do it. And so when I was feeling that contraction, that pain, that grief, I didn't medicate myself. I didn't, I didn't run away from it. I literally just sat on the floor when it overwhelmed me or bowled me over. And I literally sat on the floor and just cried until I couldn't cry. And then I would wipe my face off and I'd get up and I'd go about my day. Um, I make it sound easier than it was because at the time it was, it, you know, it, it literally sucked the life force out of me. And it only was because, you know, I told you that story about God whispering in my ear that one day I fell on the floor crying. It's not everywhere. You know, do you believe Christine that you're going to feel joy and happiness again? Yeah, I believe it, but not at this moment, not right now. Yeah. And, and when we are, when we accept the fact that we, that there is this other, you know, larger than we understand force that guides us, mm -hmm. that helps us, that supports us. When you hear a voice like that or a coincidence or serendipity or synchronicity, all those things come up. You don't go, oh, that's weird. That's weird. You know, no, you say, oh, that's magic. 
oh my gosh, I was blessed. This is a moment of blessing, right? Yes. It's not, yes. it's not weird for you to hear things or feel things or see things just because you can't, the West, or not the West, that the world cannot see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Right. I was just writing a chapter on breath and, um, you know, we're, we're, uh, gestating in our mommy's body, you know, in an aqueous environment inside her belly. And then we're pushed out into the world and we take that first breath of air. That's a leap of faith actually, isn't it? Yeah. And trust. Right. Right. And then, <laughs> and the moment, that moment that you take your, that first breath, you are perfectly whole. You are radiant gift of light. You have been embodied in a physical form so that your soul can roam about the cabin and have all these lessons called life. Yeah. At least that's my. I completely agree. And, and then along the way, you get to have, you know, these joyous moment of this connection that we share the connection we share with you know our friend heather and some of our other good friends that came through the same coursework with us and really learning how to navigate through i i think it's one of the big lessons that we're all here to do whatever whatever transition comes through right and i think transition of when we're changing things like it's there's a grief a grief of whatever it is of the loss, right? For you, it was unfortunately your foundation, your, your, your hut with your husband's uh, passing, you know, it could be a job loss. It could be a loss of a child, a divorce. It could be, you know, having to move across country and you've never been out of your County. I mean, that's, those are big, you know, and relatively to somebody's lives and not, not having that connection or really, or reinforcing that connection. If you are already connected, knowing, looking for those signs and looking for how you can get supported, right? Like I know that when we met, you did uh, one of your readings, we did, well, you've done multiple readings with me. I mean, and it was just so powerful to have you go through the Arvedic um, method of connecting with our purpose and, it was super, super powerful because there's three types. Yeah. So in Argyveda, just for mm -hmm. those of you who may or may not know, Argyveda is over 5,000 years old. It's the oldest healthcare system on the planet. Um, many medical systems are based off of the Vedas, off, off the scriptures of Argyveda. So um, the, the Rishis looked at people's body types, their shapes, how they acted in the world, uh, the things that they like to eat, the things that brought them in balance. And so the, these are described in the doshas, which are vata, pitta, kapha. So you have all three energies in your nervous system. You may or may not lean towards one more heavily than the other. So in Deborah's case, she is a tridoshic um, person, but most of the time people are bidoshic. So like I'm a pitta, kapha. Um, Heather's, Heather is um, a kapha pitta, right? So we have the same kinds of constitution, but they're, they're, you know, switched in us. And she is much more kind than I am. <laughs> you know, she, she's like, when, you, when you're in the presence of Heather, you feel loved and taken care of, right? So yes. it's the same thing with Deb, because she is tridoshic. Um, she gets three times the benefits but she also gets three times the imbalances. So her system is a little more delicate. And sometimes your doshas fight against each other, which I know um, you've had that experience of mm -hmm. having a lot of indecision. So for you, it's really important for you to stay in balance so that you can feel that peace and harmony and you know just have that level of knowingness. When, when you're out of balance, your doshas compete with each other and then you get confused. So sometimes you might find yourself going, I don't know what to do. You know, I have a decision. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing here. Yeah. Yeah. I just went through that. Right. I mean, June, <laughs> I was laid off and, 
<laughs> and I was doing both, right? Like doing the podcast, doing my coaching business. And I'm like, now what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to go for that full-time job? And, and uh, yeah, am I supposed to, you know, do this full time or what am I doing? Right. Like trying to force it, trying to force. Right. And, and that's, the decision. And that's what mm-hmm. happens because, you know, we are born into this physical body, bones, muscles, you know, tendons, ligaments, organs, we're born into this body. And then we breathe in our divinity. And then we are taught to learn and to have knowledge and wisdom and not, not wisdom, knowledge and learned lessons. And so then our knowledge, which we call our ego, grows us up, gets us to adulthood. And then we do the things we think that are going to make us successful. And we go through that and then we end up there and then we go, now what? Like, We have this sense of emptiness because we got into the goal. This is what society said we should be doing. But in actuality, there's something missing. And I don't know what it is. And I have this sense of aloneness and longing and emptiness. And then we go on to the next goal. And then we get there. And then we have the same. That's because we're disconnected to our spirit. We're we're, we're so focused on what we view as success in material terms in society that we forget to have the experience every day of waking up and finding ourselves with joy and harmony. And, you know, there's always that, that Buddhist tenant about, um, you know, find the joy in sweeping and cleaning, mm-hmm. right? Like I used to think, what the, there's no <laughs> happiness in cleaning. I hate that, you know, <laughs> but it always brings me back to, yeah, because in actuality, all you get is today. Tomorrow is not given, it's not promised, and yesterday's over. So if you're not like having a visceral sort of, you know, joyful, experiential time in whatever it is you're doing, like today I was writing and I was really having a good time, even though it was hard because I had to pull all these different pieces from different places. I was like, yeah, but I'm doing it. And, and what really motivates me is that I'm doing it for service for people who don't understand, who, who haven't pulled all the pieces together. So this, this book is going to like bring in, you know, your energies, your chakras, uh, you know, decisions, uh, life experiences that happen to you. Is it, is, it perfect, is it from the perspective of you being a victim that you have to act about it or you get to decide how it's going to help you learn and grow? Right. So it's, it's like, I'm excited about that. I'm excited to like share what it is that I've brought together and it may or may not make sense to other people. I'm hoping that it will. Um, but you know, it's just today I have the joy of like, I'm being of service. Like that's me. I, I want to be of service. And, um, I think it's going to help a lot of people get, get on board and not be afraid to say, you know, I'm interested in that. That explanation made sense to me. And it doesn't have any religious context. There's no books of anything. It's just, you know, what I've been given throughout my life, different healers, different people, different books, Ayurveda, Chinese medicine. It's all just sort of been, you know, sort of gestating in Christine. And now I'm, you know, wanting to share that with others. Yeah. So. And it's going to resonate because I think where there's so much of people have been seeking, seeking and seeking. And I think for them, this, the pandemic that happened, they were less busy. So oh, some right. of them were not happy with what they saw, right. When they got, they couldn't well, I, I distract hoping, as much, right. You can only I, watch so much Netflix. And well, I too watched a ton of Netflix, you know, um, I got sucked into the fear frequency and I literally, I think I froze for about eight months. Like it wasn't like I was saying, Oh my God, Oh my God, Oh my God, what am I going to do? It was more like, for me, it was more like, they don't know what the hell's going on out there. Um, they're not really clear about how this thing is transmitted. Uh, everything was shut down, right. Economy Mm -hmm. stopped. Um, shelter in place, hunker down, hide. So we, we have that kind of energy hiding. The only thing that saved me in 2020 is that we still got to play pickleball with masks on. 
So we, we, there were many of us who would go out and get our daily exercise. Um, but that fear of interacting or saying, even though you had a mask on, when you said hello to people, they would, you know, sort of like, oh, don't talk to me. You know, right? there was that, yes. that kind of energy going on. And I think while that was happening, I think the, the good thing that came out of that is people were like, how am I trading my life away today? Like, I, I remember mm-hmm. way back when it said, there was some meme that said, um, why do you want to, why do you want to spend the best years of your life making someone else's dream instead of your own? And I, I remember reading that going, yeah, why? But then I find myself sort of hiding, right? And it's like, I just got to a place now where it's like, oh, forget it. Stop hiding. You know, people are either going to like you or they're not. They're going to, they're going to welcome what you have to offer or they're not. Doesn't mean it, it doesn't mean anything about you, me, Christine. It just means that what I have to bring to service for you doesn't work for you. Yeah. You know, and it's like mm-hmm. getting okay with that. All of us just getting okay with, but what I, my biggest gift is I want to bring people into their alignment, meaning that I want their soul to express themselves through them and be able to live the life that that soul came back to do. <laughs> yeah. That, what's your dog's name? That is, <laughs> that is Lily. <laughs> right on. See, Lily's See, like, this yeah. Is life. <laughs> yeah. Lily's going, yeah, Christine. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right because she's like yeah when you are in purpose when you start understanding oh, I, I know oh my goodness okay <laughs> that that when you are when you understand the work that you do is what, what i what i have found it so powerful it's just understanding even myself right that i was all three and and when you're like, oh my gosh, you're all three, like that doesn't happen that much, right? And yeah. um and and that in understanding that for myself, it starts to like, I want to say like clear out some of those cobwebs that are like deep rooted in like my subconscious about, you know, like, well. I don't want to hear that not everybody wants to like me or I we're so caught up in people pleasing myself. I have been known to do that. And as I've started to stop caring about that, then it just became clear and clear, especially this last year meeting, you know, over 60 people and interviewing for the podcast is that you realize like I can see all their brilliance. So why couldn't I see completely just own my own brilliance? And I love that you have stepped fully into your brilliance because when you were able to provide that reading and I understood that I had all three is that it then became clear, like, okay, this is the direction, like these little downloads or these little signs or synchronicities that they were actually the communication that you are on the right path go and then you stop wasting your time with something that like doesn't feed you doesn't feel good the premise for me and the reason i like to do ayurvedic readings um and explain to people their doshas is because you probably you generic you have behaviors and um predilections that you're you just can't understand why you do what you do, but you do it. And it's because the way you're designed, it's the way your nervous system is expressing itself physically in the world. So when you understand what your energetic frequencies are, the patterning in your nervous system, how it shows up in your thinking, in your eating, in your exercise, in your breathing, in your yoga, whatever all that is, you don't have to take it on anymore and say, there's something wrong with me. Now you get to say, hey, check that out. Like that's in my dosha and it's coming out. And that's just the way I'm designed. Like I used to always get hit with, well, you're overly ambitious and competitive. And and I would like, that's a bad thing because you're a woman. 
And it's like, no, you, because that is part of being Pitta, is to be ambitious and competitive. And the other side of me is that I'm kind, gentle, loving, and sensitive, which is my Kapha side. So I'm thinking that's how I'm going out into the world, the kind, loving, you know, like, like Heather, kind, loving, and, you know, generous, compassionate. I'm thinking that's what I'm leading with in the world, but I'm a Pitta Kapha. So no, I'm leading with that sort of, you know, busy, ambitious, competitive self, you know, out there playing pickleball and people are getting rubbed the wrong way because I'm focused. I know what I want to do. I'm having fun because, you know, that's my perception is I'm having fun and they're considering me snarky, you know, in your face. So I'm not, I'm just, I just want, I just use the time on the court as a way for me to do what I need to do. I only have X amount of time and I want to do what I'm doing there right. That's, that is the standard of a pitta. So my standards of operation are, my son told me, you know, mom, you have to operate at a really high level. For pittas, that's just the level you operate at. It's not a high level. He's like, but compared to other people, they don't do go the extra mile. They don't do the extra things like you do. Like that's just what you do. It's how you show up. And, and so it's good when you have this language between family members and friends, you can see that stuff that's happening doesn't have anything to do with you, the receiver, the listener. It has to do with them and their expression and how their nervous system is moving them through the planet. Like this woman I met, she is a Pitta and she's very uh, driven and she's, you know, she, she sees things, she's analytical, she puts it right out there and she's telling me on the court, do this, do this, do this. And, uh, and then at one point I said, you just have to stop. It's just too much. I can't do it. And the way that she perceived that was that I was being really snarky and that I was like basically saying, F you, I'll do it my way. Shut up. And that's not what I said. So Wait, that's where you mm-hmm. see you have breakdowns in communication because I'm a pitta, she's a pitta and, and we could go at it. But because I understand her nature, I know that she's not coming out at me. I just know that's how she communicates. And I don't need to take it personally, like she's judging me or trying to make me feel bad. It's just how she presents stuff. So from Pitta to Pitta, it's easier to get that because no, it's all about knowledge between Pittas. You'll, you'll never see anything emotionally comforting in a Pitta to Pitta dialogue. It's usually blip, 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 where, you know, if you're a Kapha, you're, you know, and I think of Heather just because you know, Heather's really gentle. And I I would say, hey, you guys are gonna show up for the meeting. Okay, whatever. And Heather's like, well, no, like who who's interested in having that (laughs) meeting? And um, would you guys wanna do that on the first one? You know, like she'd be very accommodating. And uh, I've I've, um, teased her about that because, you know, if people don't wanna show up, they don't wanna show up. That's a pit of perspective, it's the information. But the cop is like, but wait, we have a relationship. I, I want to, I want to, you know, I want to nurture that. So those are yeah, examples. I, I see that with, um, I, I see it too. When I, uh, when I first go to respond, you know, um, to like, say it's an email, like you're in a work environment email and I'll write out like, okay, here's the stuff I don't got time for, you know, like, here's the answers. It's short. It's sweet. I'm not going to write a paragraph. It's it's very blunt. It's yeah. very blunt. And then I, what I've had to learn over the years, you know, being in corporate America was that, okay, now I go back and I say, hi, how are you doing? What about love, love, you know, like the, the relationship, but the first part is I have to get out that analytical response. Yeah. I just have to like, and then I can go back and go, Oh, that sounds a little and where your, where, where your vata, where your vata would sort of kick in with that would be like, gosh, if I can't word this perfectly, I'm not going to send it. Yes. If I, if I can't yes. get exactly the way mm-hmm. that it needs to be delivered, I'm not going to do it because vatas by their nature are perfectionists, which holds them with anxiety and worry because, you know, what a standard, oh, I have to be perfect. Like that, that, that in itself is uh, you know, an opportunity to learn, like none of us are perfect, right? But vatas are wired, are hardwired that way. 
And so when they can't do it, they get worried and anxious and they tend to float above their heads and they're not grounded and they can't get anything done and they keep going, bouncing it from this to that, to this, to that. So the fact that you're all three of mm -hmm. everything, um, depending on your breath work and what you're eating and the, t and the season will trigger whatever is going on. So like now it's winter um, and so it's cold. So it's exacerbating your vata even though you're, you're pitta and kapha, which keeps you grounded and adhered to the earth because that's what kaphas do. Mm -hmm. Your botanist, because it's winter and you live in a cold place, can get you off balance very easily. And you can run a whole conversation for a few days probably about why it's not gonna happen. Yeah, and you know, to that point is that I have found email that I would never send, right? Like it ended up in the draft. And I'd have to read it, like, say, you know, the next day and then send it because I right. like going around and around. But to your point of it being cold in the season, what I've had to do because I live in where it's cold and snow is I'm out walking and I look like an Eskimo, right? Like I got my, my long under thermal underwear on and I got like four layers and I'm out walking the dog because I did find that I was inside too much. And then that's when I, I could feel it like in December. Well, and the, the energy of the earth was a little weird, off, a little weird yeah. too, but, um, so I think I was picking up some of the collective energy, but I didn't have a way. So now what I've really have understood, like today we went for a really good walk, right? Like we go for really good walks. Mic yeah. Your and, mic dropped out. Sounds okay. Is it better now again? Nope. No. Wow. Can't hear you. you can't hear me, huh? Oh, it sounds like you're inside a glove compartment box. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you are. There I am. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, and uh, understanding that. And I think, you know, what I, well, not what I think, what I know for sure is that when we had that session last year, understanding that with, with, uh, with our session that you did for me, is it really put things in perspective? So when I said I launched this podcast messy, that was a big deal, really big deal. And so as I've allowed myself to let things happen and process them through and meeting, um, all these amazing people, and you were so generous to be my first recorded podcast and, I wanted it to be perfect. Do you remember? So we yes. were taping just for people to know we were taping and you had like new, um, a coughing fit I had a coughing fit and my headphones died or whatever. Like it fell out and it died and, and I could like feel my part of that myself, like so stressed. I wanted it to be absolutely perfect. And the funny thing is, is our conversation was absolutely perfect. Just, we had these little little blurbs. Right. And so yeah. I, I, I could feel it. And then I go back and listen, because just like when you're in a reading, when we're in a podcast, I rarely remember anything that said because I'm right. in some other zone. And so I went back and we're listening to it because we were, you were editing it. I tried I was trying I, to edit it and didn't stay. Yeah. And then it didn't stay. And so then I just put it out there and I was like, Oh, you know, like I really wanted it to be perfect. Well, really you know, the, the good thing about it is I've had a number of people listen to it and say to me, like, they don't even talk about the mistakes. They just talk about the content and, you know, how it landed for them. And it was really impactful. Yeah. And it is so. still a year later, still uh, one of the highest level podcasts listened to. That's still. awesome. And 12 months later, it's still a go-to uh, podcast that people are listening to. Wow. And that's, that says, uh, says a lot about, it was really about not the superficial stuff, right? It was really about, uh, you know, their story. How, how, if you haven't listened to it, I'm going to say it again. Episode six, people need to go listen to it. Super, super powerful. So um, now if you have one thing that you would share with everybody, Christine, about maybe they're trying something new. 
in looking at all this new stuff that have been incorporated in your life this last year, what would be a piece of guidance that, you know, that no matter what type they are, right. If they, and of course, if they haven't had their, their work done with you, they should reach out. Um, Yeah, you should, everybody, I swear, if you would get your energetic blueprint of understanding what your doshas are and sure you could read it off the you know, the computer or the internet, but it's not like having a reading done for you because there, I bring so much more to it. Um, but ju- even if you just glance and get your doshas, it'll give you a little bit of relief from you <laughs> being so critical about yourself because you, you are your worst critic. You are your harshest, harshest judger. You know, you, uh, probably speak your, to yourself in a way that you would never speak to anyone else out there. So when you get your energetic blueprint and you understand how it lands and it impacts you, like for you, you've been having all these aha moments as the year has gone on. You've had keys to understand why you're feeling congested or, you know, not quite understanding what that is. You, you know, the fact that intuitively you knew, oh, I need to walk. You know, coffins need to walk. They need to be out and they need to exercise. So do pitches. But coffins, especially in the winter, they can become sloths. You know, couch potatoes. Yeah, big sloth. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, the fact that you intuitively were listening and you knew like, oh, I, you know, I need to move. I need to be out there. That your intuition was guiding you. And I love, I love mm-hmm. hearing that. So when you get this reading, it's not like, First of all, you get it taped. And secondly, you can listen to it as much as you want. And um, thirdly, you will find a level of resonance and relaxation for you being who you are. And that, that's just the gift. I, you know, it's the first step to self-acceptance, which takes us to self-love. And however much you can love yourself is how much you give love to the world. So, you know, that was the original reason I started having this conversation and as I've done it more and more I just see how powerful it is for so many yeah it's so powerful the other thing that the other nugget that I got from our session was that I needed to really protect my own personal time with myself Mm -hmm. I needed to constantly make sure I was grounded checking am I grounded and really just allowing that quiet time you know, so my meditation practice is probably just about every day. I, I mean, I do miss every once in a while, but I can tell the difference if I do. And so I try it. If I miss it in the morning in my morning routine, then I'll listen to it at night. Right. And I do a lot of guided meditations and so, or energetic healing, since I like to, to take those myself. But so if you had one, one tip for them, for themselves, even after whether they uh, have a reading with you, but as they navigate through trying different things into this new, you know, their next year, right? Are they consciously well, looking at I, their life? What would you? What, I said what this to it? I said this to somebody on the pickleball court yesterday. She was new, and uh, I guess one of the instructors had told her, "Don't hit with two hands on your backhand. Just hit with one hand." And she's like, I don't, it doesn't feel stable. It doesn't, it's not comfortable. I, I, but she always yells at me when I used two hands. And I stopped her and I said, here's the biggest lesson that I can give you. And I think it applies to life. Actually, she actually said it, that applies to life in general, which is don't let someone else steal your joy. Don't let your partner, uh, uh, you know, speak down to you that you made a mistake. Don't let a teacher tell you that it's not the right way. If you feel expanded and you feel good about that, do it your way. Because that's all you have is your own guidance is doing it your way. And we've all been uh, instructed throughout our lives to not trust ourselves, to say, oh, your authority over me is more uh, significant than my own. So if your heart isn't expanding and you aren't joyful and happy, you feel contracted and small and diminished, that's your body. That's your intuition telling you, no, not happening. It's not good. Don't listen. 
if you're in someone's presence and you feel joyful and happy and you're yucking it up and laughing and you got a big old smile on your face, yeah, it's probably the right direction to go. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. That does apply to life. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think the, the biggest mm-hmm. compliment was that, that she and her friend said, oh yeah, we saw you playing a tournament this weekend. I said, yeah. And she's like, yeah, I remember watching you. You were just smiling. You were having so much fun. It looked like just like you were having so much joy. And that's before I told them that. And I, and I said, yeah, I was because my friend came down from Sacramento and we were playing really well and there was a lot to be joyful for. And I so appreciate you telling me that, you know, because I think I rub people the wrong way because I am really happy and they find it, they find me annoying. And I, and it's like, it's because I'm not beating myself up on the court. Like I make mistakes. Don't get me wrong. And I do things that I shouldn't do, but I, I don't go back and go, Oh, you dumb idiot. What'd you do that for? I'm sort of like, Oh, okay. What'd you do? Okay. Don't. Okay. Readjust that. Um, it's like repositioning, reframing the mistake, like understand what you did wrong and then try and fix it in the next time, you, you know, that situation comes up. But, uh, you know, I had a friend, uh, a pickleball say to me, yeah, we were not this last time, but many months ago. Yeah. You know, we weren't playing very well. And, um, and he wasn't, he wasn't playing very well, but I wasn't going to go, Oh, you know, why don't you hit the ball better? You know, I'm like, Oh, good try. You know, keep, keep hitting, keep hitting that ball. And then Randy goes, I don't understand why you, how you could be so positive or whatever. And I said, look, you know, the fact that I'm healthy and that I can be out on the court and playing is a a gift. It's a blessing and B I'm not making money at this. And I don't need to punish myself for doing something wrong. If I'm doing something right, I'm going to celebrate that. But if I make a mistake, I just say to myself, what do I need to do? How do I need to fix it? I don't need to go back to the line, go, you stupid idiot. How could you hit the ball like that? Oh my God, you didn't get up to it again. Oh my God, you didn't put your paddle. Like, what's the point? Right. Right. And so Mm -hmm. that's a framing of how to live right? If everything you do is a punishment and you're judging yourself so hard and all you do is admonish yourself, how can you find and be love? You can't, you just can't, there's just not room. You can't do both. You can't feel both of things at the same time. So you either got to pick the love, the joy, the kindness, or the worry and the doubt, like at the exact moment, you could only have one feeling. So when I play pickleball, I, you know, I I might not play well one day and I might walk off sort of grumpy, but I'm not going back the next day and playing like that. You know, if I can't have a good attitude and bring myself to the court, then I'm not playing because what's the point? What's the point of playing when all you're doing is bashing yourself? I much rather go and play like my game is so different now because my friends retooled it. And I'm like, yeah, how can I practice? You know, like, who can I get out there to play with? I want to like, see if I can hit my forehand again, you know? Like, I want to know that I got it. It's so much more better to like be that way, anticipating, expecting, wanting to work for something and seeing it happen. And if it doesn't happen, then, you know, it's like, oh, I need to change my grip or I need to meet the ball out here or, you know, whatever. But it's not about, you're incapable, you know, like people really beat themselves up. And I think that comes from our childhood. And I've had to unlearn that conversation for myself because my husband taught me about unconditional love, no matter what. He never, ever, even when I messed up and I knew I messed up and I came home admonishing myself, he, and my younger son's the same way. It's sort of like, it's okay, mom. You know, it's okay, honey. You know, you're alive. Like when, when it comes down to the last part of, you know, you're alive and living and you're here and you're healthy. Mm-hmm. That's all that matters. Yeah. And, and when you get, get to be this age, I'm, you know. Our age, yeah. Uh, you know, it's like, okay, every day I wake up with no COVID, no cancer, no, you know, no diabetes, no whatever. 
cardiovascular disease. Okay, that's another bonus day of living. And that's really how I look at it. Like there's nothing really in life. Like if I were to die tomorrow, I would, I would be almost fully satisfied at if I departed the planet a little early and I didn't get to teach what I'm supposed to teach on the planet. Um, but other than that, other aspects of my life, yeah, they're satiated. Oh, that's a powerful thing for people to, to think about, you know, really puts things in perspective, especially, you know, with how crazy it's been. It's a little, a little crazy, interesting. It's not even that's downplaying what's going on right now, but it's, but one of the things that mm -hmm. I learned, uh, when my husband died, or maybe it was a little bit before then the Dalai Lama says, um, he said, if man realized that every day that they wake up, that they're one step closer to death, they would appreciate their lives more. And I, I, I actually usually at least once a month, I have a conversation with myself about, well, what would it mean if you were to die today? If you were to die today, what, what legacy would you leave? Would you be satisfied? Would you have, you know, touched all the people you want? Are your kids okay? You know, like, I, I think in that framework, because he did die unexpectedly out of the blue, just boom, got sick, died. Right. And so for me, it's like, I don't think I take life for granted. Maybe I do when I watch a lot of TV, but for the most part, you know, I try to be that conduit of just like regurgitating self-love, self-acceptance, you know, no punitive language, reframe, what, what is life doing for you, not at you, you know, all that kind of stuff. Because um, I used to think it was just on TV when, you know, you'd see these like sort of toxic relationships happening with amongst family members and friends and then I got exposed to some of that and I was like oh my god it's not a television show people yeah. actually freak themselves like this uh, yeah isn't it crazy that's so unfortunate I know you know in that vein too of of really being conscious about re the reframing you know I look at everything that's happened over the last year you know I um might seem insignificant to some people, but I lost, you know, my 11 year old dog yeah. who's been like a rock. He was a 90 pound pit bull. And he was like the center as an empty nester. He was like a big focus in my life with the other dog that you kept hearing and with Lily. And, you know, I had a job loss. I had, uh, you know, some other things happen and, I actually saw it as this huge opportunity. I, yeah. though it was, it gave me the opportunity to really ask myself some deep questions and give myself some of that breathing space to feel stuff. What I've realized, and I knew all through this, you know, and I've moved a couple months ago and it was this wonderful moment to be able to really refresh and to con continually reset myself of how grateful I am, you know, that I've had this moment in time to be able to really, really not like a wasn't clear, but what was really, really clear. What's the most important things in my life. And, you know, there's changes, you know, with uh, material things and, you know, I don't really, I don't really, I'm not attached to them, you know, and it gave me that opportunity to really take a look at what really was important, even if it's something simple as, you know, like I had, had it sounds so strange, but I had this small TV that I had a built in VCR. So that kind of ages it, right? Like I had it, I'd bought right. it for my son when he was in elementary school. So that you know, if he wanted to watch a movie sometime, he could just do it. And I wasn't attached to it. But over the years, I found that I got attached to this little TV, right? Yeah, it weighs like 500 pounds, right? It's attached to my son. And in the moments that we shared watching this, like, you know, the fox and the hound on it. And so when I was trying to downsize my stuff, I was like, why am I so attached to this TV? Well, at the time, 
I spent a couple hundred dollars. It was a major purchase in my life. Right. And then it was for my son. So then I had the emotional stuff to it. And then his cousins would sometimes come over and watch it. And so then it became the TV when I was doing crafts. I'd put it on, put a, the same movie over like Sweet Home Alabama. I've probably watched a thousand times on that TV. And then when I would be doing housework, right, I'd put it on in the room or office work. And so I found like, why was I so attached? And I re- had to really detach myself. Like it really wasn't this TV. I just needed it to go someplace that I knew it would be cared for. So I did it did get rehomed with all the movies. And now that it's been gone and I thought, wow, what was that? Like, what was that attachment to this kind of old heavy TV? And it was more about the memories, right? Yeah. Like those stay with us. It doesn't yeah, even matter I mean, it, about their stinking it, TV. You mm-hmm. could just take a picture of that TV and still evoke all the memories. Yeah. Yeah. It's so so beautiful but anyway and it got you know it was gifted to uh somebody with little kids and they got all those little movies right so cool like yeah, the universe is so good because i actually put that out to the universe right like for it to find some place where it's actually going to be loved so well what i what i want to take away from that story is that you know you lost your job you moved a couple times you you know i know you've interviewed uh, you've gone out of state to interview and it didn't work out for some people uh you know that would be terrible and awful and they'd be telling the story about how terrible and awful it is and the thing about the universe is that whatever you're speaking occurs more so if you're focusing on i didn't get that job because of da 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 and i did this and da 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 you that framework, that energy would still be occurring for you because you were talking about it in such a way that it happened at you. But with the great illustration about what you just shared was, well, life happened at you and then you chose how you were gonna respond to it. You chose how you were gonna frame it. You chose the way that you were gonna go about it. And some of it was seamless and others of it, you know, other parts of it, you struggled a bit. Yeah, but now you're here on the other side and you have this perspective. So now you're really expanded in the opportunities that are in front of you so that you can go and create the energetic field for whatever it is that you're wanting to create. And and that really is the difference of probably how the old person that you used to be maybe five, 10, 15, 20 years ago Mm -hmm. versus the new evolved, enlightened, expanded Deborah, who you are today. Yeah. And it, thank you. Thank you. Cause it's, it's a conscious choice. You know, some mornings you wake up and you're like, Oh, it feels heavy, right? Like change can feel heavy at a time where you're like, I used to ask myself too. the first big life change I had was that, you know, 20 years ago was, um, I just like, why is this happening to me? Right. I didn't think it was life giving me these opportunities. And as I worked through it and then, you know, kind of reinvented what my life would look like for the next decade or so, it actually looked better than I had ever imagined. What I do know now for sure, as Oprah says, what do you know for sure? What I know for sure, third major life transition, it always works out. Yeah. And if that, I keep yeah. myself aligned. Yeah. That's what the universe will do. Right. Like it's a test. Like everybody thinks, oh, you know, I'm deciding to be this way. And then it is. Well, it's sort of like that. But, you know, universe just doesn't give you it. It doesn't happen that clean and that clearly. I, you know, every major life even getting married, every major life decision I've made that was really going to impact me. Like my, an old boyfriend had fallen back into my life right before we were going to get married. And I always had it, like, I always had it for this guy. I just really just thought he was amazing. And he still is. And he's married. He has a couple of kids. But before that happened, and before Bruce and I got married, I asked Richard and I said, you know, is there any way ever a possibility that we could get back together? Because I was committing to this man for the rest of my life. And he's like, I love you as a friend. We're great friends. And it was like, okay, 
you know, but I was tested. I was tested when I left my job. I was tested when, you know, I had babies. I was, you know, I was, I was just tested all the time at every major thing I did in my life. Even this business, I've been tested. But this test, because universe is supporting me, this test is more about trust. This test is not about making a, you know, this or that uh, decision. It's, it's really about trust and knowing that it's going to be okay. And, I, and I'll be successful as long as I'm serving. And I just, you know, like, okay. So for all of you who are out there and you want to learn about your intuition and you want a deeper connection and you want clarity around the static, come find me. <laughs> right. So why don't you share, Christine, why don't you share how they can find you? Like, what are your socials? Oh, okay. So my social on Facebook is Facebook at Christine Mira.com. And that's C H R I S T I N E Mira M I U R A dot com. And then Instagram is backwards. It's Mira Christine. That's how you can find me there. Uh, and then you can find me at Christine Mira on LinkedIn and on Gmail. You can just Christine Mira at Gmail and let me know, Hey, I heard you on the podcast. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be offering you a class. The first uh, phase of the work is three months about stepping in and getting clear and being, you know, being the radiant light that you are. Yeah. And watch it unfold just that knowledge of your sessions. So, so powerful and lingering. Right. And I love that you record them because I think we take in what we can first hear, what we want to hear. And then you go back and you're like, I didn't even hear that. And then (laughs) I didn't even hear that. And now you're hearing it. That's been my evolution. So I also have a spiritual mentor who has guided me for many years and, um, helped me through, the last breakup I had and I we taped everything on zoom and I literally listen, 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 five, six, seven, 10, 20 times, however much I needed till, till I got uh, nauseous. Like I can't listen to it anymore. Like I, I do it to wear out. Um, and the reason I do it for me that way is because I know that whatever she's sharing and teaching me is in cellularly, energetically integrating into my being. Because when you're first talking and listening, you're in the experience of having that interaction. But when you listen to it again and again and again and again, the layers of that information start to really unwind into your own DNA. And there are times when I have listened to her through the breakup where I could feel myself shifting. Like literally, like after the eighth time go, okay, I'm complete with that. I'm done with that, whatever it was. Yeah. And then I, and I would like sort of step into it and I would feel it and I walk around with it and I'd own it. And then I might not, I might need to listen to it again because now I'm a different person. So that's why I feel it's so important when I do sessions with people, because it's not me giving it to you. It's source giving it to you for your greatest learning. And, and it's, it's super powerful. It's, it's one of the, biggest ways to create catalytic change yeah not just a little change catalytic catalytic change catalytic change is you know taking something there it is and then literally having the information and it expands and expands and expands and now you don't have this you have this and you, and then the next time there's some information that's coming in, it you'll contract because we learn in contraction. So we learn through suffering. We learn that way. We don't learn from uh, good things happening, uh, joyful things happening. That's the result of you will are willing for to be contracted, to feel the suffering, to feel the grief, to look at the dark side of things, so that you, they can expand. Because without this, you can't have that. And with right. this, you can't have this. Mm-hmm. So you're constantly fluctuating. So don't get the idea of people that you're on a spiritual path that goes straight upwards. 
you know, like, yeah, right. <laughs> if somebody's, if somebody's selling you that run, <laughs> it's yeah. not true. <laughs> right. I, I think too, you know, like uh, this last year, uh, the work, you know, like the session we had, like it, uh, it needed time to integrate. It needed time to like, I don't know, ferminate in my, in my DNA, in everything that was coming through, reaching yeah. to like the subconscious and being able to take some of that. It's not like we had a session and the next day, my life was like, yay, right? Like it was, it's the integration, taking bits and pieces of what I was ready to hear at that time. And as it continually builds on, you know, and then you look a year later, this podcast, right? Like you have a podcast, you're writing a book, you've had, you know, you've met with over a hundred people easily over this last year. And, and just a couple months, you met with a couple hundred people, right? And, and being able to do that and really stand in it and walk through that uncomfortable, that messy, that, oh, it doesn't feel comfortable holding it with one hand. <laughs> yeah. And I, you know, I think the biggest thing is I change my language around me. I don't admonish myself. I don't make myself feel bad. You know, I'm stepping into my greatness. Somebody had told me about speaking words of greatness to her son. She's black and I had never done that because in a Chinese household, you don't speak words of grace, greatness. You are expect, expected to perform and perform at a super high level and there's nothing less. And if you do anything less then you're going to get chewed out, that, that's sort of how that works. So one day Gloria is telling me how she speaks these words of greatness to her boys. And I was like, what, what what's that? And she told me, and I realized in that moment and my heart crushed because I realized that I had never had words of greatness with my boys. And they were probably at that point, they were like 14 and 16. And I had always admonished my older son. And from that time that she told me that, like, I have changed, you know, I acknowledge people, I see people, I, you know, tell them how much I appreciate them. I see their brilliance. I want your radiance. I want everybody to show up healed and whole, because if we can find that in ourselves and in others, what a community we can build right? Like if everybody had access to the invisible parts of themselves, meaning their divinity and their greatness, like just think how the world could be then. Right? Yeah. How powerful would that be? I mean, when two or more gather, it shifts energy. Yeah. And if we were intentional with it and understand that, wow. Yeah. But you know, like give it to yourself. I, I was looking at something when you were, you were asking me, like, what could people do? One morning uh, in January, I woke up and I read, uh, I just had something come through and it's called, I am filled. So here, let me see if you can. It's over there on my speaker. Anyway, it's, I am filled. And it's me speaking to me, telling me I am radiant. I am kind, I am loving, I am compassionate, I am, I am, I am. And then at the end of 47 seconds, at the end, I, I say, I am filled. Mm. And it's, and then it just, it's, you know, it's my first voice of the day. And it's so, I don't even know what brought me to do that. But mm -hmm. I figured, uh, well, my little mind gets in there all the time. Why not have my divinity talk to me first thing every morning? And it really, when it's your own voice, it's your own energy field, connecting the loop back through your ears into your brain, having you say it and speak it to yourself and your third eye, your eyes are closed and your third eye, you know, it's just so powerful. That would be powerful. What a, what a great practice to do every day. Keep Maybe I can centered. send you, I can get, take it off and then you can add it to the podcast. Yeah, that would be but wonderful. If, it's just, you know, I, I don't know for you, but my energy has shifted. It's really different than it was last year. Yeah, yeah no, I can feel the shift. I think that's why, you know, what a difference a year can do with, you know, we were both stepping out into um, 
really coming out. I don't want to say coming out of the closet, right? But it's it was we're coming out of the spiritual stuff, like being very visible, and not just oh telling more of our friends, but actually telling people who had no idea who we were. <laughs> not, I mean, I, I remember mean it. there was an attorney. I think I told you the story. My attorney friend on the pickleball court, like, well, what do you do? And I said, oh, you know, I'm a um, I'm an intuitive. And uh, I help people get connected. And he's like, good, that's so good. I'm so happy that you do that because people really need you. And here, this very conservative, he's a, a, an attorney. And I just was shocked. Like he was so uh, elated that I did that work. And here I thought he was going to think, oh, that's crazy. Who is just so woo, whatever, you know? And he didn't. He was like, that's great. That's awesome. You know, people need people like you today. Yeah. So you just never know who you're going to tell. Don't judge yourself. Just share yourself. Right. Yeah. No more judgment. So, well, I'm going to wrap this up. This has just been so beautiful. And I'm so grateful that we were able to just come together again, because it's always so much fun. You have, you're just so delightful and kind and giving, and you're always you are so of service to others and really, you know, shining your light is, is, has shined that, that have, has allowed so many others to shine their light. And I'm just, you know, I'm just very blessed that we're such friends. Yeah. So. Yeah. And thank you for the opportunity to come back and revisit you. So I have a date next year, March 1st, 2023. We'll yes. do our third session. Yes, <laughs> we will, right? Like we will. We we just put that out to the universe. And gosh, can you imagine what it's gonna look like then, right? Like, you know, hopefully, like, hopefully yeah. a lot different than it is right now. Like yeah. last year. Yeah. But yeah. Thank, thank you for inviting me back. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. And so I'll be sharing all of the ways to reach uh Christine in the show notes too. So if you want to uh, reach out to her, go ahead and listen to this, you know, podcast, share it with a friend of somebody who would really enjoy listening to it and go find her, uh, her podcast intuition first with Heather McKay and subscribe to them and share that because there's a lot of really powerful tips in it. Um, yeah, I really you know, enjoyed that podcast myself. Oh, thanks Deb. Well, the thing about that podcast, it's for all those people who may or may not know, have questions, you know, what is all that stuff they're talking about? What is that metaphysical you know, energy. What does that mean? You know, what is an aura? What's your chakras? What, what do you mean? I have intuition. So we get to really break it down and have it be accessible that, that you'll be able to, um, it's, it's tangible. That's what I want to say. It's tangible and you can practice. And then, and then we have a lot of thought provoking conversation that has nothing to do with intuition, but it has to do with living the life that you lead and what you're trying to create. Yeah, it's really, I really enjoy it. I love um, uh, how you and Heather um, exchange back and forth. It's really, it's really, really good. So people, you know, please go, go subscribe to that too and go take a listen yeah. to those, those episodes. So Yay, Heather! Yay, Shout out Heather. To you, girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next year we'll have her on with us, you know, we'll see yeah. if she's ready to venture out and be on. <laughs> Well, you know, she was really shy. She didn't want to do it. And I just sort of said, too bad you get to do it with me. And she's like, okay. And then when we do videotaped it, she's like, I don't like videotape. I'm like, I'm sorry. But <laughs> and, now yeah, like- <laughs> and now she's like, okay, when are we going to do it? And so it's really been awesome because she has really blossomed, you know, in her, her own stuff, in her own work and getting a, a bunch of clients. So it's just been good for everybody. Yeah, it is. It was, that's, that was such a blessing for the beginning of last year for all of us to come together. So, uh, well, thank you again. And then yeah. reach out to her with all of her uh, social that we'll put to in the show notes or just reach out here and I'll get back to you too. So thank you. Thanks everybody. Bye.